Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and that was... Josh Cook. Josh Cook has a very special segment later in the show, so stay for, tuned for that. He's going to play Super Mario World with a banana. So we'll talk a little <laughs> bit more about that when we get into it. Uh, let's talk about some weather. It's getting a little uh, better outside, I promise. Uh, the storms, the weather is all crappy happening going on. I know. I think that's a, me- meteorolog- a, meteor- a meteorological term, crappy out there. Yeah. yeah. So Dodge. anyways, yep, totally. So let's check it out. 39 degrees. Your high is going to be 45 today. You have a 70% chance of rain, snow, mixtures. And then that's pretty much going to start kind of trying to go away, but then it's going to come rear its ugly head again on Friday. But this Saturday, uh, this weekend, it looks like it's going to be mostly cloudy. So I don't know. It's going to be highs in the 50s, so it might be better, but it's not it's going, going to be any be worse. Kind of a, a moist, cloudy day. It's going to be pretty moist this, uh, this weekend um, and this week as well. Yeah. All right, so news. Let's talk about some news things that are happening. Dead body was found um, in an access tunnel uh, near the university the other day. Mm-hmm. The Missoula Police Department is investigating possible homicide after someone reported finding the body of a 46-year-old Michelle L. Andrews in the maintenance tunnel Sunday evening near East Broadway. Uh, Sergeant um, Montana Police Department Sergeant uh, Travis Welsh said detectives are investigating the matter. Are uh, Is a suspicious death. Uh, no further information has been released, so... They're going to be investigating this. And, of course, you know, a lot of the university students got a a text on Monday to alert them about this. So that's kind of what we know. It's just kind of like uh, it's ongoing investigation. If you have any information, call the Missoula Police Department. Um, State Hannah's Act is named after a Native American woman who went missing for several days before being found dead in 2013 on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation. The bill is also aimed at the problem of missing and murdered indigenous women uh, who are affected in far uh, disproportional numbers. Um, They're a lot, uh, I think they're 10 times more likely to uh, be raped and murdered. Um, It would create a grant program for tribal colleges to build a database of missing Native people. Uh, Senator uh, Jason Small, Republican from uh, Budsby, Montana, sponsored the bill, passed in the House unanimously in March, but has faced struggles with the Montana Senate. First, it was tabled at a committee and then revived, but with the requirements of creating the missing person specialist and any money to pay for the position was removed. The missing person specialist in the bill is meant to help better coordinate law enforcement efforts to make sure searches for missing people, especially American Indians, starts as quickly as possible. And that's kind of what we're at right now. It's kind of a standstill to try to determine whether or not it's going to happen. Um, but the, the unanimous part is to create a database so there's transparency to help yeah. um, investigate this thing. And I think that the Montana Senate feels as though that they shouldn't have somebody hired to run this, to start it. Because it's like, you know, if you think about it, it's like a starting um, um, program. It, it, they're thinking about it in terms of longevity. Yeah, I don't know. It's yep. Think it it's a da- it's a database. Happen. Once the database is built, you know, what, what do you do from there? So that's something that you know that they're arguing. That they're figuring out. So uh, Monday night, uh, mini- uh, in Minneapolis, the uh, the Virginia Cavaliers took home the NCAA tournament championship in a dramatic set 85 to 75, 77 overtime defeat of Texas Tech Red Raiders. What has been a long March Madness has become quite the upset, but the Cavs were a seed one last year, and they were the first in history to lose to a seed 16. At one point during the game, a fan threw a tortilla, a Texas Tech school tradition that landed on the uh, elevated court, causing people to stop temporarily. (laughs) The team also matched a previous record, 21 combined three-pointers in a championship game. The Associated Associated Press reported it was an evening of few other firsts. Both teams made their first, their uh, NCAA championship debut, and the University of Virginia won its first ever national title at this tournament. The last time the NCAA had a first-time champion was 13 years ago when University of Florida uh, beat UCLA back in 2006. Space! Uh, I did some local news, I did some state news, and I did some national news. Let's go um, beyond international and go into outer space. Um, Scientists have discovered uh, an actual photo taken of a black hole. Uh, the world is seeing its first ever image of a black hole Wednesday as the international team of researchers from the Event Horizon Telescope Project whew, released their look at the massive black hole at the center of the galaxy 87, M87 as they call it. Um, the image shows a dark disk outlined by emission from hot gas swirling around it 
under the influence of strong gravity near its event horizon. So a lot of times, uh, black holes, you don't see them. They're, they're, they're void of nothingness. Yeah. And so the, how they find the black holes is find the space around it to determine it. So this is a breakthrough in black hole detection, yeah. uh, promised to answer the, a question that has dodged scientists since Albert Einstein proposed the existence of black holes and the journal theory of relativity. How do you document the presence of something that's invisible? Here's a picture. Oh, wow. Yeah. That looks awesome. Yeah, it's completely blurry. You can barely see, what, tell, or what even is happening and going on. Sure. But this is like that's the first ever documented picture of a black hole. Yeah, that's Because it seems like, um, I mean, like for me, like in science class, it's always like, oh, it, you know, like the pictures and stuff like that. So it's like, no, that's actually not an actual picture of a black hole. It's yeah, just the just representation. Like scientific representation. So they analyzed the image and relative data, and astronomers also grew intensely confident with other assumptions they've made based on theories about workings of the universe. And, you know, like one of the things is that Stephen Hawkins has never been a Nobel Prize winner, and he said that radiation it, from these event horizons could exist, but we won't know that unless we actually have a probe to be able to see that. But this is yeah. 55 light years away. So if you got the speed of light, it would take you 55 years to go to the Virgo galaxy cluster. Yikes. Yeah. So yeah, that's what's happening in the news. Um, I have some art clips for you guys, and then when I come back, we're going to talk about some city council stuff. Uh, yeah, so here it is. Yeah, so they're going to be uh, selling a lot of this art, as you can see right here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of skim through this a little bit faster, so you can kind of get a good representation of a lot of the art that's being auctioned off from the Clay Studio of Missoula, and this is going to benefit the Clay Studio. They have art classes, they have a bunch of great programs as well. Um, but yeah, this is from our very own Rick Phillips, so if you guys get a chance to go to the Clay Studio this month, you have until about the 20th, until most of these items will be auctioned off. All right, so... Let's talk about some city council. I kept it fairly short, and one of the biggest things that are happening within the city council is a lot of businesses near the POV are complaining about their, their neighbors. Um, so this is one of the uh, folks that uh, talked earlier uh, last week and has since uh, garnished a good uh, crowd of people to speak in terms of issues. So the public comment, what started out as a means to create a warmer shelter, has basically ended. Uh, the POV is starting to fill up and many businesses and residents in the area near the POV are fed up with the urine and feces found around and near their properties. So here is Carrie Britton who uh, kicked off this, uh, um, the, the, the issue um, just this last week and she's back again. Um, I have to say wow, really. Um, it was pretty amazing the support that I received, the phone calls, um, police patrols picked up, some of the questionable vehicles left. Um, I've had the police um, come call and stop by and give me their personal numbers in case something were to arise that needed to be taken care of. So, so appreciated. Um, the Pavarello did a cleanup in the neighborhood. 
Um, that was great. Um, I heard from the Westside Neighborhood Association. Um, obviously, they it seems like they've been um, talking to council on a regular basis, it seems. But if that's the case, then I don't understand that why it got to where it went. All right. So um, she continue on to kind of explain about how there should be uh, more uh, public utilities for some of the people. Because there's always that kind of um, consensus where it's just like, um, you know, bathrooms are for customers only situation. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, you know. Uh, so the POV has been instrumental in providing temporary shelter. Now keep that in mind, temporarily. Temporary. The Poverty Center has uh, been seeing a lot of success with individuals who have made the effort to get out of homelessness, um, but they have to do it themselves. Uh, but uh, what they hear a lot about is in terms of individuals who have a permanent out within the facility based on drugs and alcohol because this is, Fall Varela Center is a dry center and part of um, getting out of homelessness is getting into, into sobriety. So um, there are others who appear to be under influence when the POV um, as a dry center, so, oh sorry I have to readjust my notes. So the whole idea is that is a dry center and they usually accept people no later than 7 p.m. on most nights. Um, but of course I just wanted to clarify that uh, the Pavarella Center is not forcing people to get out of homelessness. That's not their job. They're supposed to create a community with people who are temporarily out of house. Uh, Gillen Wiggins, uh, he talks about public lack of restrooms in the downtown Missoula, in the Missoula area. Those who don't have the privilege of reliable housing also can find themselves without a place to use the restroom. And in turn, it is not uncommon to answer nature's call in public areas. If Missoulians are frustrated by this fact, it is a sign that we need more public restrooms and waste disposal sites around the city. And they need to be open all year. Last winter, I went to use the public bathroom outside the art museum at Portland Loop, uh, and I found a funny sign. It read, closed for the season. I chuckled to myself and took a picture to put it on Instagram. My question was, and I use saltier language, but what is bathroom season? <laughs> Have I been doing it wrong my entire life? See, public restrooms are useless if they are locked. And as a result, people will, will relieve themselves outside. I know, I've done it. And frankly, I'm sure almost everyone in this room has too. There is other ways of concern as well. I understand that as a result of untreated addiction, it is not too uncommon to find used needles and other paraphernalia on our city streets. So far as I know, there is only one place to dispose of needles safely. I'm sorry, I keep puffing into this. Uh, for people suffering from addiction, if there are more, please correct me, but either way, there aren't enough. They wouldn't be there if there were. If Missoulians are upset about excrement and needles ending up where they shouldn't be, let's as a city work to make sure that there is greater availability of the places where they should be. I'm asking. All right, so that was Gil Wiggins talking a little bit about uh, lack of public utilities in the downtown area. Yeah, I meaning you just think about it, you know, bathrooms are for customers only. There's no public source of bathrooms, and the only time they have sources of public restrooms is after Memorial Day weekend when they turn on basically all the plumbing and water systems that are in the Missoula area, you know, like water parks. But they also open the bathrooms at Cares Park, um, Lions Park, and a couple of those other parks yeah. as well. So it's just one of those things that, um, you know, bathroom season in the public park areas are basically during the summer after Memorial Day. That um, guy's a good speaker, too. Hmm? That guy's a good speaker. Yeah, he's spoken a couple times at public, uh, at, during public comment about this he as well. He set up like a comedy club routine. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that if you ever find any used needles or anything like that, you uh, can take them down to the Missoula, County, uh, Missoula City County Health Department to dispose of any hazardous needles that you find on properties or in the downtown area if you feel as though because um, throwing it away in the garbage is definitely not good enough because there's people who sift through the garbage to find needles. Yeah, I found one the yep. other day. But if you find a used needle, um, take it, you know, step up, take it upon yourself and bring it over to the city of Missoula County Health Department, which is on uh, just near Railroad Street, up the street a little bit. And that's the closest thing I can think of. Of course, you know, every they, twice a year they have hazardous waste days, has waste days that they do over on the north side of Scott Street. Um, and that's basically for anybody who has like bleach or any kind of chemical stuff that they've used, but also, you know, use needles and old medication that you want to get rid of. But uh, of course, year round, Missoula City County Health Department is the place to go. All right, let's talk about something completely different. Um, city staff has worked with Missoula County Climate Smart Missoula and an ad hoc group of community organizations 
Commissions to develop a draft resolution that would establish a goal of 100% clean electricity for the Missoula Urban Service Area by 2030. So part of this is to work with Northwestern Energy to find a uh, typical uh, um, to find forward thinking solutions to have clean energy. And one of the things that North Energy is doing, just so you guys know, is that they're uh, trying to buy uh, more coal powered um, electricity going on here, but I'll talk about that a little bit more with Stacey Anderson who talks about this. So here's a Amy Sillenberg who has a lot of props to give to a lot of community members who have stepped up with Climate Smart. We were able to provide a presentation on Wednesday with my colleagues Diana Mineta from the county and Chase Jones from the city. We're you know, here to answer any questions if, if those should crop up, but also just thought for the record we'd um, also, for folks that were not here at the meeting on Wednesday, we have a support letter that's signed by over 400 individuals, businesses, and organizations, and then some individual letters that were brought forward um, and given to us to give to you folks from the Missoula Federal Credit Union, Providence St. Patrick Hospital, and the American Lung Association, all in support of this effort. So all right, so that was Amy Sillenberg with Climate Smart. We also have another lady, uh, uh, Winona Bateman, Families for a Livable Climate, and this is what she had to say about this. Um, when I think about the future of my family right now, and I think about what these other women were talking about, and I think about climate change, some days I have really hard days. And what I'm looking for as a, as a member of a family, and of course we're all members of families, whether we have children, or we have a spouse, or we have a dog, we consider ourselves part of a family. And we all plan for the futures of our family. And I am just really grateful to live in a community where we're asking hard questions, even though we're not perfect. And we're trying to find solutions that work for most of our citizens. So thank you. All right. So that was uh, Ms. Bateman talking a little bit more from the family's pers perspective. Stacey Anderson talks about Northwestern's um, efforts to buy more coal energy. Um, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that uh, there's a lot of data mining things that are popping up in the state of Montana, which are taking a lot of source of power. So Northwestern Energy is uh, trying to figure out ways to uh, offset the amount of power that is necessary to run a lot of these operations. There, so just so you guys know, it's, it's not because they don't want to, it's because they have to. Here, um, while we're passing this resolution, a very important resolution um, that by no means I think takes away our focus from the immediate needs that so many in our community have. I think we can balance two priorities simultaneously, the immediate needs as well as the long-term vision. But um, the majority of our power comes from Northwest Energy, and right now Northwest Energy is trying to get a bill through the legislature that will allow them to buy another 150 megawatts of coal power. That is moving in the exact opposite direction of what this resolution is trying to address. So I know that um, all of you came here to support that. I would hope that you would go and, encourage, and contact your legislators, encourage them to not vote for SB 331, and it's most likely going to make it to the desk of the governor. And so please take the time to call his office, voice your concern, because we need a partner at the state level to help make these really important climate steps um, move forward. So. All right. So that was Stacey Anderson talking a little bit about that. I have one more quote for you guys, and it has nothing to do with anything I was just talking about. This is Rabbi Hepsi Gogo. -Go. I don't know. That's what I heard. Heck yeah. Yep. And uh, he is cel he's talking about celebrate um, Religious Freedom Week, and this is what he had to say. In a world rife with divisiveness, it's important that we be able to come together on issues that we all agree are most crucial for the betterment, betterment of our society. Uh, Education Day honors and recognizes the work and vision of the greatest Jewish leader of the 20th century, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, uh, universally known simply as the Rebbe. The Rebbe is a Hebrew term for teacher or spiritual guide. But the Rebbe wasn't only a Jewish leader, he served as the world's moral consciousness during a time period of great social change. And he urged greater attention be paid to the seven universal laws given to Noah following the Great Flood, uh, which until today serve as a universal bedrock of legal and moral code. To understand that these laws and this moral code is not just a way to control the population and a way for people to escape punishment, but as a way to uh, better society, uh, a key to a brighter and more elevated society. And as a leader, the Rebbe had unparalleled ability to focus on the needs of the individual even while dealing with issues of global proportion. And the Rebbe taught that we all carry responsibility to better the lives of others and that we have the potential through small and big random acts of goodness and kindness to affect real global change. 
The Rebbe taught that even change on a global scale begins with the individual, uh, especially with the youth in our communities. The Rebbe believed that values-based education is the key to a better and more decent society, being that the youth are our future. So in a broader sense, Education Day is not just about um, bringing awareness to the type of education, um, what to add to the education in our curriculums, etc., but it's also a time to take up a higher calling of social and moral responsibility that we all share and to believe in the inherent goodness of mankind and to act upon it. All right, so that was... Uh, um that was Rabbi Hepsi Gogo. Um, I totally butchered the name, but that's how I heard him say it. Um, it's Hepsi Gogo. Um, this is uh, also this week is Celebrate Islam Week. Um, they talk about this a little bit in a couple, in a couple past uh, city council meetings, but I'm just going to tell you about some of the events that are happening. Uh, tonight at 7 p.m. in um, the University of Montana, LA 011, um, a showing of the Me and the Mosque, in which a Canadian Muslim woman challenges the prevailing views about male dominance in her faith community. Thursday at 6 p.m., the Jan American Hall Room 202, How Islamic Faith and cultural, Culture Affects Muslim Refugee Well-Being. PhD candidate uh, Diana uh, DeCoe um, leads a discussion on how re religion and cultural identity affects refugees' well-being. And then, of course, Friday, uh, um, rounding things out, is an Arabic uh, calligraphy workshop. Study the uh, elegant shapes of the Arabic language and Islamic art forms. Learn how to write important Islamic concepts, names, and words in Arabic. And that's going to be in the UC uh, room 331. And you can always look up uh, softlandymissoula.org uh, for more information about Celebrate Islam Week. Um, of course, one of the things that they did talk about in the city council that I didn't really want to like harp on too well is, uh, is the alleyway behind um, Hoagieville. So they wanted to take a barrier out of there and open up the uh, alleyway for uh, more access to the new tavern that's being proposed there. And uh, basically, uh, the barrier was there in the first place, and it was complaint driven back in the 70s. And it's a, it was a weird, bizarre. Um, proclamation that was made by the city council of old, which they'll bring it back to committee to help kind of clarify whether or not this is completely necessary to have a, a barrier within an alleyway. So, I don't know. That's just the, you know, that's uh, that's the controversy, I suppose, that's happening in Missoula. <laughs> a, a berm, <laughs> just like yeah. a, an alley berm. So, you can find out more about this and more by logging on to the city of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. Uh, committee meetings are starting this morning, and you can check them out, out live on our channel, channel 190, through Charter Cable. But, of course, um, that pretty much does it for your city council. They got, uh, uh, they're going to be talking about the uh, alleyway berm mm -hmm. uh, blockage in the Public Works Committee to determine whether or not they can take it out and how, what they can do to help um, solve the problem. I think it's kind of funny because uh, the people at Domino's uh, went to the uh, community meeting to complain about the alleyway blockage when, in fact, back in those days, there was a little history report saying that they made that there because of the Domino's drivers at that time. Um. So it's like the Domino's was just like, we like the berm. And back in those days, it was because of Domino's. Interesting. So, well, yeah, just something to think about. Winning, it's like they're winning, but they're also uh, it's hypocritical. Yeah. But anyways, that's just what I noticed about the meeting. So you guys can check out all those and more going to the city of Missoula's website. But just so you guys know, we're going to be uh, um, – we have orientation every Wednesday night at 5.30. You must RSVP. If you're interested, you and, and or group are interested in coming down to MCAT to learn more about us, you can go to MCAT.org. You can sign up for MCAT tours, and they're available online as well. You have to RSVP, and we can give you a tour of MCAT and what we're all about. If you want to learn more information about my show, uh, we can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Uh, so nice we made you write it out twice. All right, so I don't know what else I have to say, but uh, I have uh, another Spring Flicks video for you guys. And when we come back, we're going to throw it to Josh with a little bit of uh, gaming fun with a banana. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. Hey, yo. We're trying to find all the stuff. Okay, one. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, here's an elk. Four. Four. All the scores we can find. Six. Oh. Five. Wait, no. Five? I don't know. Oh, flowers. All flowers. Six. Six. And then I th there's always going to be one down here, I remember. There's like a, a secret one. 
somewhere. It's like a secret tunnel with one. Oh, 19. Wait, look over there. Gosh, are you guys okay? Are, are you people good? Oh my gosh, watch your step. Ah, oh, don't do that. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Where'd it go? It's right here! Give me back my hat. Give me that back. I'm going as fast as I can. Just slow down. The <laughs> wall. This is strange. Like, I could really use a frappuccino right now. Let's just not talk about frappuccinos right now and, like, get our bodies back. I'll do anything to get my body back. Mm. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Let's we'll... do this. All right. Did it work? I don't yeah. think so. Nope. I'm sorry about that. Did you like that one? That was a stupid idea. We should run into each other. That's a good idea. You ready? You know what? Let's go. I really don't know about this, guys. How old are you? Let's go. Okay. On three. One, One two, two, three. three. I think we should probably stop doing this to ourselves. What? No. It's not that bad, right? I mean, I guess. get back on here we can like reset our like bodies so that we can get back together like, well I think we should just go back so like that's what we're doing because that's how we got into these bodies in the first place. but it's not working so maybe we should just try this well, I think we should just try it again well obviously it did work for us in the first place but okay, if we go on here just, let's just try the carousel first fine Okay. Um, I think we're okay. Yeah. It's back! I don't have to use a urinal anymore! My hat! Oh. We're back. Can you Wait see the me? camera, I can see it. Okay, right there? Yeah, hey. there we go. Okay, so Scott asked me to do a segment, and I at first I thought maybe I'd do like a video game playthrough, but those are pretty boring. I thought maybe I'd do like a cooking segment, but I don't know how. Um, so I decided to do both. So I'm going to play Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo, which some of you guys might remember from the 90s. Um, I know Scott remembers. Yes, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to use this banana to play that, and I'll show you how. 
as you can see on the desk I have just like a bunch of really colorful wires going on right now so uh... okay so I'm just gonna cut off a slice here and that's gonna be a button of mine now I'm gonna cut off another slice and make that my next button uh, <laughs> shout out to the market for giving me this banana it was the last one this morning so I'm really glad I could get it for this incredible segment <laughs> alright so here's my layout these slices of banana are going to be like my my arrow keys you know my left right up and down there's the down and these two are going to be my uh, run and jump buttons in typical Mario fashion so I'm just gonna go over here load up my game you getting any audio on that? no nope, that's good okay here I'll just Never mind. <laughs> Alright. So you can see by pressing this banana, um, all these bananas, oh, that's, that's stickier than I thought it would be for some reason. Right. Your finger kind of sticks to it. Uh, you can see that I can navigate through the menu at least. Kind of. Is it? Wait. Yeah. So then I can hit the A button. And here I go. Um, I'll start out with Yoshi's Island 1, <laughs> which is one of my favorite stages because I'm a nerd. Alright. Uh, uh, so that was me being bad at Mario World. But you're playing with a banana. I am, but I feel like that's not even an excuse for me. <laughs> Also, <laughs> I guess I set it up so that I can only spin jump, but honestly, I'm okay with that because uh, I died again. <laughs> uh, Scott, help. Uh, I can't make you a better game player. Uh, <laughs> like, like all the time, like I, I always see. Um, there's always like <laughs> the kids who are just like, "Oh man, it's like how do I do this?" Is like, you know, you just got to figure it out. That's just the way it is. I guess. Here, let me. Uh, fix this button real quick. There we go. So yeah, I mean, uh, w w how'd you get this whole emulator? You said that your brother uh, bought this through a oh, Kickstarter? Yeah, well the emulator is, is mine, the, the video game, but um, this little thing, this little board here is called a Makey Makey, and it was a Kickstarter project uh, a little while ago. Um, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> um, I just got a game over, so, ouch. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, anything that conducts electricity, you can turn into a usable gamepad. So, or you can use it as a mouse and, uh, surf the web on your banana or other various type of fruit. You could use any fruit you want. Nice. Think of a fruit. Uh, Mango. Could use that. Oh, what? Yeah. Uh, how about could, uh, how about like, a pomegranate? Because they have lots of seeds in there. Yeah, you ever wanted to just like punch a pomegranate? All the time. Yeah, you like can do literally that. every second of my life, I'm just like, it, where's the, my pomegranate? Don't get me started on those pomegranates. Can I punch it? Oh. And then they're just like, no, dude, you have oh. to buy it first. I'm like, oh, okay. Here's a Yoshi. Here's the thing, though, since. Spin jump is my only move. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to use the Yoshi because that makes you jump off of Yoshi. I can I can run with him for a little while. Nice. Yeah, yeah I'll just I'll just run around a little bit. Blap. Blap. Oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh well, you know you're Except, not playing with a typical controller. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I figure I might uh, do a few challenges on my YouTube channel, um, just using 
various things to play various games. You know, like, maybe I'll play Castlevania with, like, um, uh, just, like, a sword, you know? Right. Um, I could, um, I could play, uh, you, you ever played Gex before? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that game yeah, is weird. That's most people's reactions. I know. It, I, it's, 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 it is an extremely weird game. I could play Gex using just, like, a gecko. You know, just, like, get a pet gecko and tape one of these wires to it. and like, Just see how it plays. Uh, yeah, surprisingly, when I first used this, I thought that it would, like, hurt. Because uh, it's, like, electrical currents are supposed to be flowing through your body so that the computer can recognize it. Um, surpri- I'd, I'm really bad at this. Um, surprisingly, not hurting. Not hurting at all? No, nope, not at all. So I'm going to get a... I did stab myself with one of the wires. I'm going to get a closer look of the bananas. Okay, yeah. Here. Yeah, there you go. There's the bananas. Take a look here. So as you can see on the screen, if I hit this one, you know, I go left. If I hit this one, I go right. If I hit this one, Mario looks up. Yeah. If I hit this one, Mario ducks. Yeah, one. Of, I think, isn't one of the best conductors like a potato? Don't they usually have just people like plugging light bulbs to yeah, potatoes? Yeah, that, that's like the typical, like... Science uh, project. Fifth grade or science project, you know. I never did in fifth grade. Really? Yeah, people, I don't even know what I remember in science class. I remember that my <laughs> science teacher had like a giant snake. And I was like, that's cool. And that's all I remember. And then I think yeah. we did an art project because I think he was the art teacher too. A potato art project? No, just art and or science whenever oh, we had okay. him for science. Uh, to um, some science is an art. <laughs> uh, I think this is kind of an art, right? Like... This this looks like something you could find in like an art museum, or an art museum, you know, an art show. It's just like oh, step up and play games with these bananas. <laughs> That's definitely not sanitary for sure. It's like you have to get a new nanner for per new kid and whatnot. Yeah. Oops. I just went to this place again. Um, yeah, like over at uh, he was like waving circuit. They're using an Xbox Connect. Uh, which is like one of the most useless video game peripherals ever. Um, they're just using it as an art show project uh, where it like gives you a live feed of yourself. Like it shows you, but it draws you in polygons. Yeah. Um, that was pretty cool. I have a picture of it that I'll show you later. But, okay, I'm just gonna. Uh, I gotta have. <laughs> I feel like I've got to... Your jump it. is all messed up. Huh? So do you want to go back to... You should go back to the screen and just kind of sh- say how you, like, assign roles to a lot of those controllers. Oh, yeah. Because I think that would... Re- like, I think that'd yeah. be really cool. I'll just like... Because you, you, you showed the... Yeah. You, showed the you showed the surface value, the end result, but it would be nice yeah. to know, like, how it came to be. Okay, well... Because you have to tell the computer which, uh, you know, connection is goes to what. Yeah, as you can see, I've... And this is for, like, anyone at home who's, like, ever had, like, a USB controller that's just very generic. Yeah. And a lot of times when you plug it in and ask you, like, what does this button do? So the emulator yeah. has so to I, be, like... I can actually explain the science of that. Basically, when you have just, like, a regular game controller, uh, the way it works is when you press a button down, that uh, finishes a circuit in the controller that's, um, that is set as a preference to a certain action in the game. So like, if you press one button, it completes the circuit that tells the console to make your character jump. Um, But in this case, it's done a bit differently. Here, I'll untape this from my computer and show um, just the circuit board here. So in this case, it's this kind of, it's set up like an old type NES controller. In this case, you are the circuit so um, the circuit, the earth, is basically like the ground that... Um, Could you hold it up a little bit more? That starts the circuit. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, I can see that now. Perfect. Right. So the earth down here, which is taped to my hand, is the grounding circuit, which um, kind of like starts the circuit. And then, um, so for instance, I've got this yellow wire, which you can probably see the best. I've got that, that is um, labeled as the space bar, 
So I've got that connected to this slice of banana. Um, which will make me jump. Um, and that banana is the one that you used to run. Yeah, so and like basically, if you complete the circuit from Earth to space, then it will complete an action. So I'm just kind of putting things in between that connection from Earth to s Earth to space. That sounds... Earth to space, man. Earth to space, man. You know, I'm just connecting Earth to space, man. Uh, Great. Um, like, yeah, so you see the wire goes here, and then by touching this, it makes the electricity or the, the uh, my natural body's electricity completes the circuit from here to the earth wire back to the machine and that executes a command so I've just got like a bunch of these buttons set on my emulator to execute those commands and anybody can do this really um, it's actually a pretty easy setup you can make your own if you like nice um, or you can buy one from me because I have two so Craigslist hit me up is there anything final you want to say before we wrap up um, next time I'm using a cucumber because they're less sticky. All right, turn in the camera and say bye, Josh. Bananas. Now I got to fix this camera. Well, you're going to see me fix this camera live onto the show because this system is all whack because I have to use this remote. And every five movements, it goes we back to the other camera. We should that most MCAT systems are not indeed whack. No. A lot of MCAT stuff is really cool. Well, this is what happens when you have a show that you run yourself, run the tech, yeah. <laughs> and run the audio, and run everything. It, it, it gives you, like, a, a, like, it does give you a power-hungry kind of sense to it as well. So I'm going to mute your mic, so if you want to move it, you can move it now. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just flip this baby so we can have a clean light over back here so we can start continuing to talk about some... Um, events that are happening within the Missoula area. I'm just going to get right into it. Hey, let's, uh, you know, MissoulaEvents.net. Um, it's always a great resource for everything that Missoula is. So if you want to get a chance to look that up, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. I do not have it for you guys. I'm just going to fix this camera for Josh for our end of the show. See what I mean? Technical difficulties as I'm talking about them. Oh, see, I'm trying to control camera two, but camera one keeps on stealing my signal. And, yep. <laughs> Oh, see, it, it, pretty much, but, you know, like, when you have two, uh, um, basically two ones that are so close together, it just doesn't want to work out, whatever. So, you know, just a little uh, background and technical stuff for MCAT as well. So, anyways, let me turn this back up. Do you want to play me a little bit of music while I talk about some events that are sure, happening? Man. You want some background? Yeah, why not? Let's throw some background music. All right, guys, so Wednesday, if you're interested in doing some indoor fun, so it is going to be rainy and stormy outside, you go to Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Um, Roots Acro Sports Center and Missoula Gymnastics. And now Flying Squirrel is doing some toddler time with some young kids. So if you have any kids that want to be indoor and do some tumbling in safe environment, you're more than welcome to do so as well. Um, and... You know, Tiny Tales is going to be at Empower Place, which is the Missoula Food Bank, and they do that pretty much every Wednesday from 10.30 to 11. And it's a good resource for it. It, it is a wonderful community um, grocery store, basically, and it, it teaches you cooking classes and all sorts of stuff like that. But this is a good way to enjoy reading and socializing time at Empower Place at Tiny Tales. Hands-on science, uh, aquatic life, um, Spectrum Discovery Center is open for visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits and activities. Explore the wonders of aquatic creatures, where they live, what they eat, and how they breathe at the Discovery Bench today. And at the make at the special making activity, they're doing picture puzzles. So I'm assuming that you, you draw a picture, and then you cut up into a puzzle, and you have to solve it. Yemen's spiraling humanitarian disaster. University of Montana, the world has all but chosen to ignore Yemen's multiple wars, even though the United Nations calculate that three quarters of Yemen's people need sustained humanitarian aid if they're able to survive famine in the world's largest outbreak of cholera in nearly 50 years. And this is uh, Speaker Owen Sears, adjunct f uh, faculty, Mans uh, Mansfield Defense Critical Language and Cultural Program, and this is going to be at the University of Montana starting at noon today. Sound Soup and Sanctuary with, uh, I feel like I'm on um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood right now. 
you know, <laughs> soup and <laughs> sound soup and sanctuary with Peggy Minholtz, um, University of Congregational Church uh, in the UCC, University Congregational Church, not to be associated with the University Center Center, um, but this is the University Congregational Church. And then and today at noon, they're going to do a harp. Alice Williams is going to be on harp. The 20 minute concert begins at 12:10 and is followed by a soup and bread luncheon. If you're interested in doing some Scrabble and Bridge around lunchtime, you guys can do some Scrabble and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center pretty much every day. Uh, elephant and Piggy Storytime Missoula Public Library are doing an Elephant and Piggy are coming to visit the Missoula Public Library. Enjoy a special story time for children of all ages with Elephant and Piggy. Uh, uh, they will choose books for your favorite librarians to read. Don't miss out on all the fun. Meet at the Dragon Rug area from 3.30 to 4. There's the uh, healthcare, CPR, and AED. This is the part of the Lifelong Learning Center. If you're looking to hire, uh, um, have additional training on CPR, certification, and AED, which is the automated external defibrillator and relief of foreign body airway obstructions. Upon successful completion, you will receive a Heart Saver Healthcare CPR AED two-year certificate card. Um, they usually have to update it every time because there's always new information in medical science. And that starts at 5 p.m. tonight at the uh, Lifelong Learning Center. Airy Magazine Program Citywide's Slam Poetry. So there's Slam Poetry happening tonight um, at 6 p.m. I don't know why, if you'd be interested in that. But I'm, I'm more of a uh, light touch poetry, like, like not exactly like poetry. <laughs> Okay. I, I like some lighter stuff. <laughs> so it's part of the Big Sky High School welcomes community members to their annual citywide poetry slam. It's going to be at the public house starting at 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, it's three minutes per person. Sign-ups open at 6 p.m. and evenings will begin at 6.30. Um, performances are scored by five judges and cash prizes will be awarded. Entry fee is $5. Carpooling is suggested due to limited parking parking downtown, but after 5 p.m., the, uh, the meter monitors do not check your meters. So just remember that uh, me and the mosque film is going to be at the University of Montana like I said is celebrate Islam week tonight at 7 p.m. at the university uh, I believe at the university center theater they're doing me and the mosque film which is about a Canadian um, Muslim woman who has to deal with a gender inequality and that's pretty much all your uh, Wednesday events. Um, if you're interested in some karaoke and stuff, the Badliner has some karaoke, the Dark Horse has some karaoke, and a bunch of other things as well if you go to MizzleEvents.net. All right, let's talk about some Thursday events, and then we'll wrap up the show. So starting for your Thursday, uh, Tell a Friend is a family fun time at the um, YMCA special event. Um, it's family fun time at the YMCA. Um, they believe families need a place to play together. Family Fun Time at the Y provides an indoor, all-weathered play place where parents are welcome to join in the fun. Bounce houses, tumbling mats, scooters, hula hoops, and more at the YMCA. Tiny Tales at the Missoula Public Library. They are doing it in Power Place today, but tomorrow uh, at 10.30, they're doing it at the Missoula Public Library. Parent participation is the key to the success of their programs. Uh, you are best equipped to help your own child focus on their activities. Please join in and show your child how much fun it is. Please put toys and food away. They distract your child and others. If bottle blankets or other not to be part to, parted with items are necessary, they'll work with it. So the whole idea is that this, since it's story time, it's all about story time. So there's about finger plays, rhymes, and games, but it's all about the book. And it's at the Missoula Public Library pretty much every day at 10.30 a.m. A social security workshop. Missoula Agent Services are helping people who uh, have no idea how to work social security. If they have any issues with social security, it's a great uh, class. It's two hours long. It's from 11.30 to 1.30. And this is at the Missoula Agent Services building. And uh, Mary has 29 years of experience working with the Social Security Administration as a claims representatives and technical expert. The workshop time is, again, from 11.30 to 1 p.m. And it's going to be at the um, Missoula Agent Services. You can sign up by uh, logging on to socialsecurity.eventbrite.com. You can also call Missoula Agent Services at their number. Peeps! Tasting event at the Big Sky Branch. If you go to Big Sky High School, they're doing a peep tasting. Uh, so they're different, doing the different uh, flavors of peeps starting after school at 2.30 on Thursday. Yap! Bookmaking. The Zootown Arts Community Center is doing a bookmaking. You, if you're an artist and you're looking for a book that uh, exemplar, exemplifies your own art, it's good to have art not just only on the inside of a book, but also on the outside. That happens after school from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, every Thursday, and this is going to be going on until April 25th. 
Blackfoot River Outfitters uh, fourth annual ladies night. All are welcome, but they want to emphasize on helping ladies um, uh, begin fly fishing. So if you're interested in fly fishing, they welcome you to this open with open arms at the Blackfoot River Outfitters, and they're doing this at 5 p.m. tomorrow night. Religion and cultural identity discussion, like I said, um, there's more Islam, uh, um, celebrate um, Islam week and 6 p.m. at the University of Montana, Salam, Missoula presents a week of engaging events about beautiful faith of Islam. During this event, they're entitled How Islamic Faith and Culture Affects Muslim Refugees' Well-Being. And they're going to be at the University of Montana uh, Thursday night at 6 p.m. All right, so let's talk about some uh, Thursday late night events. If you're interested in going out and about, they got some things happening um, they have the resident series at Monks. It's KFGM, which is part of their resident series, and they help bolster uh, um, musicians throughout the community, and they're with the uh, Missoula Community Radio, so you can check that out. It's at 7 p.m. at Monks, and it's going to be rock music. It's a community event. Let's see what else is there. Steel Pulse is going to be playing at the Wilma. Uh, Rock and Karaoke is going to be at the Dark Horse. You got some op- open kayak at Currents Aquatic Center. So they convert their pool into kayaking. So you get to learn about tumbling and being able to spin with a kayak. And then, of course, if you're interested in that EDM DJ type music, you can go to the Badlander Thursday night, um, late night. And these are mostly kind of late night events. So that's all I got to say about that. But I have some more to say about where you can find more information about my morning show. It, oh, I can't show you. It's uh, you Go to MCAT.org. Uh, you can give us a call at 542-MCAT for more information about what MCAT has to offer. But I think I'm pretty much done. Hey, Josh, do you want to play us out? Yeah, let me play a, a little SNES for you. Okay. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Oh, I'm Josh. Hi. Yep. He's learning. Yeah. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> Take it away, Josh.